Congratulations, we made it through a week together, um, or um, better yet, we made it through maybe feeling a little bit alone, but now we're together. And from week to week, I'll tell you, I need to look forward to something. I don't know about you. No trips anymore, so what are we looking forward to? Maybe the elections being over, that's definitely me. Maybe, maybe there being um, a new building coming up, Totally me, very excited about that. Looking forward to seeing people that I know are currently like across different parts of the country, but then being able to say, like, not only have I seen you on Zoom on Shabbat, but now we're actually, oh my God, hugging each other because, and this is the greatest. And whether you're across the country or across the city or right on the same block as any of um, your fellow compatriots of Temple Israel, we're just happy that you are here. We feel a closeness. We feel that we are achim, shevet achim gam yachad, that we get to sit together. And, and this is truly a blessing that we do not take for granted. Um, so moving into this moment of Shabbat is a blessing every single week, but I am very conscious also that you know, sometimes I take good notes and I know where I actually was last year by virtue of what Devar Torah I gave. And I gave a Devar Torah in 2018 on Lech Lecha, which is tonight. Um, the, the Parsha is Lech Lecha. And um, two years ago tonight, that was National Refugee Shabbat. And right after National Refugee Shabbat came the Pittsburgh shooting. I know where I was, you know where you were. And then last year, after we somehow managed to get to another Lech Lecha, um, it was, uh, we welcomed roots. We, we had Rabbi Hanan Schlesinger, and we had um, Shadi Abu Awad, um, a, a, uh, a rabbi who lives in the Shtachim, in the, um, in, in the territories, in the West Bank, who um, is friends with this Palestinian. Um, because he lives right near him, right next door to him, um, but they live in different realities and they came to talk about their experience, their mutual experience of loving a land and being able to try to find love for each other. And I contrast those two Shabbatot, Lech Lecha last year and the year before to this one, and I go, oh my gosh, can we get a break? Lech Lecha is a very heavy this is a very heavy um, parsha suddenly, but the but the freedom that's intrinsic in lech lecha cannot be lost on us. Cannot be lost on us. It would be such a chaval, such a shame, if we didn't see how lech lecha is about going out, yes, from your comfort zone, but to a freedom that you should know and embrace. Going out, 
going out from the self that you wish to leave behind to the self that you know you can be and you want to step into and you can see her right there. She's right there. He's right there. You just want to step in and embrace that person that you've always maybe longed to be a more courageous person, a more thoughtful person, a less impulsive person, whatever any of us wants to be. But we can go. We just need to have that voice inside of us that says, go and be brave, because you know what? This Shabbat should show us, we know how to be brave, my friends. We know how to be resilient. We know actually how to be those people that can take pride in being related to Abraham and Sarah, who really knew what it meant to get up, uproot, and find purpose, and make meaning along the way, and that's just what we do. That's how we do. Um, and we sh we're uh, you know blessed to be part of a people that that says, don't get stuck in the convenient and don't get stuck with the boring. Life is not boring. God knows. Um, so I hope that this Lech Lecha Shabbat, oh, every, every wish that you possibly had, that we should be able to wish each other Shalom in the chat box right now. Shabbat Shalom in the chat box. Give us one word of hope this Shabbat. What do you want this Lech Lecha, Shabbat Lech Lecha to be in a word? Um, in a word that really grounds other people as well as yourself, because we're going to ourselves, lech lecha, go to yourself, and by extension, each other in this holy community. We're going to light the Shabbat candles now. You're going to do the chat box, and you're somehow also going to multitask and light your Shabbat candles, and we'll sing the bracha with the cantor. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam Asher kidshanu b'mitzvotav V'tzivanu Lahadlik ner Lahadlik Shel Shalom, everybody. Take a look at that chat box. What's give us a little word, just a word of hope, a word of something to go towards this Shabbat. Lech lecha. Get out and go to that idea, toward that possibility, that reality that we want to create together. We sing lecha dodi. Here we go. <laughs> Let's. All right, we will sing Lachado D as. Okay, here we go. Technical difficulties as we're waiting for the Shabbat bride. Here we go. And. Oh, we love Zoom. We love Zoom. But you know what, Cantor? I'm pretty sure I can speak on behalf of this entire Zoom room. Take the Chadodi any way you want us to. Oh uh -huh. 
Waiting for that beautiful melody by Shlomo Karlbach. And now we rise where we are as we stand together in this prayerful moment that even though we might be separate, we are one. We are together as we sing the Baruchu. <laughs> Let's read this together. This is an hour of change. Within it, we stand uncertain on the border of light. Shall we draw back or cross over? Where shall our hearts turn? Shall we draw back, brother, my sister, or cross over? This is the hour of change, and within it, we stand quietly on the border of light. What lies before us? Shall we draw back, my brother, my sister, or cross over? Umavir yom umevi laila umavdil ben yom uvein laila Adonai tzvaot shemo el chai vikayam tamin imloch aleinu leolam vahed Baruch ata Adonai amariv aravi. Wisdom and wonder, passion and instruction, story and symbol. All these things your Torah God gives to us. And the more we devote ourselves to it, the more it grows and gives. What could be a truer token of your abiding love than this holiest of your works and the living language that gives it form? Baruch atah Adonai, ohev Shema Israel Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Shema Israel Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Shema Israel Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Shame, Kabod, Malahuto, 
bahed. Baru shem kvod, shem kvod malchuto. Le'olam bahed shema. אדוני אלוהיך, וכל לבבך, וכל נפשך, ובכל מאודיך, והיו הדברים האלה, אשר אנוכי מצבך, היום על לבביך, ושיננתם לבניך, ודיברת בם, ושבתך בביתך, ובלתך בדרך, ובשוך בך, ובקום וקשרתם לאות על ידיך, והיו לתותפות בין עיניך, וכתבתם על מזוזות ביתך ובישריך, למען תזכרו ועשיתם את כל מצוותי, ואיתם קדושים לאלוהיכם, אני אדוני אלוהיכם, אשר הוצאתי אתכם מארץ מצרים, להיות לכם לאלוהים. אני אדוני אלוהיכם, אדוני אלוהיכם אמת. Standing on the parted shores of history, which maybe we're doing. Maybe, who knows? Okay, but I, but I digress. Standing on the parted shores of history. We still believe what we were taught before ever we stood at Sinai's foot, that wherever we go, it is eternally Egypt, that there is a better place, a promised land, that the winding way to that promise passes through the wilderness, that there is no way to get from here to there except by joining hands and marching together. חזק ממנו, ברוך אתה אדוני. כאן ישראל. Think about this, and you may not be near it. You may, you know, I don't want you to have to run across the house, but I, but I do want you to picture, it should be pretty easy to conjure, a family photo of a blood relative that you have. So take a look, a look at it in your mind. Do you see yourself in it? Can you note the resemblance? Do you see other people in that face or those faces? Why or why not? Think about that for just a second. What's the connection? And maybe even if you're not, um, you know, some of us have been adopted, so we don't exactly have that necessarily. But, um, but you know, I'm gonna ask you another question, which is, is there someone in your life that you treat like family, even
even though they're not a blood relative. Think about that for a second. If they're just mishpacha, right? The word for family, mishpacha, we are wrapped up in the same, the same sort of, we just got the same, it feels like DNA. Somehow we came from the same mama. Same, somehow we have that kinship. What is the nature of your relationship with that person? Your sense of responsibility to that person? I mean, think about what that means for a second. They're mishpacha, you know? And especially if you're not a blood relative, that is a special. It might be a friend. It might be, um, you know, somebody that you just have known your whole life. And now I want you to think for another second about, have you ever been a member of an organization that refers to its members as brothers and sisters? or family. Um, you might hopefully have heard us say that a few times. I hope you've heard us say we're family. Um, and uh, I got all my sisters in me. And, and what do you think it is about, you know, what terms come up for you when you reflect on that? You're like, so what my question is really, it's like, what constitutes family? What constitutes family? And does there have to be a family resemblance, so to speak? Or can you, can the apple fall really far from the tree? Or can there be a person in your life that you're so close to that you, you did not come from the same person, you know, but you have grown in affection or maybe you've grown in your suffering or maybe you've grown in some kind of struggle together that makes you mishpacha. I think we all categorize people in our life. And I've, I've been thinking so much about that as we come upon this election, because I think of, you know, at the, at the best moments in my life, I mean, I can think of times when I lived in Israel where the sound went off for you, the, the siren went off for Yom HaShoah, you know, Holocaust Remembrance Day or Yom HaTzma'ut, Israel Independence Day or Yom HaZikaron, Remembrance Day. And that siren went off and I felt like, oh, this is my mishpacha. This is my family. There was a time I remember when I was a kid and it was the 4th of July and there was an aerial show that went over my little house in Canoga Park, California. And I was like red and white and blue and I was blown away and I felt like everybody was I don't think I had the word, but I felt something. You know, I didn't even have a name for it. It was just tingling head to toe. That's my family. I mean, that somehow I'm part of that. That's part of me. And it felt so good and it felt so right. And it felt so different than maybe the current rancor or division or like yuck that we might be feeling right now. And I, I think I speak on behalf of a, a nation that is grateful for everything that we have to live in this democracy, to also be able to say affectionately yuck because it's not feeling good. You know, as we come upon this election, we can feel that sort of, oh, is this my mishpacha? You know, is this my family? And it's not just, you know, one person to the next. We've categorized each other. You're my family, you're not my family. You are distinctly, I have no idea who you are, right? That's what's happening in our country. Safe to say, we look at another person and we cannot see the family resemblance, but let's go back to our origins. Just a couple of weeks ago, we were at, there we were, Gan Eden. There we were, just the first human being and then the second, and there they were, and they were created in the image of God and God knew them. And that's the family that we come from, but it feels so far away. Sometimes we approach this election, it just feels so far away. So there's a, there's a story in Lech Lecha this week, one that I haven't taken um, note of in a while, but it feels very personal this week. In the midst of a battle between the warring kings of ancient Canaan, we hear about Lot or Lot, and he is the nephew of Avram who is not yet Abraham, but I'm gonna probably call him Abraham if I slip up. And, um, and Ab Lot is taken captive and during this war. And when Avram is told about it, he says um, he heard that his brother was captured. Ki 
נשבע אחיו, אחיו, um, when we say אח, אח means brother. And so, you know, we translate it that way, but actually Avram had another brother. His brother was named Haran. Lot was his nephew. That was Haran's son. So why, Rashi, the medieval commentator says, why, is, why are we hearing in the actual Torah text in Genesis 14, why are we hearing that when Avram was informed about, his, about Lot being taken captive, he heard that his brother was captive. And we take every word very literally. So why brother? It's not his brother, it's his nephew. Just say nephew. Because we're supposed to focus on this word, ach. And again, what we're learning here is that there's something special about family. So special that we sometimes blur the lines a little bit. We make accommodations for people It's not quite my brother, but you know what I'm saying. You know, that's how I felt. I'm so, I'm suffering because of my brother's suffering or my nephew's suffering. He's like, ki'ilu, it's as if that person is my brother. And so then another part comes when Avram refers to Lot, to Lot as his brother again. And Avram said to Lot, let there be no strife between you and me. They get into it a little bit later on, the two of them, between my herdsmen and yours, for we men are achim. Again, that word ach. So ach is really important. But then we come back to Rashi saying, okay, but I'm going to point to something here, Rashi says. I'm going to point to a story in the Midrash that says, actually, were they literally like brothers? Were Lot and Avram brothers? And he says, no. Rashi says, no, that Midrash shows that it's not that they were brothers, but the verse means that they actually had facial features that were the same. This is in the way long ago days. This is called facial recognition, friends. Facial recognition. This is happening in the Torah. Um, but then, you know, so there's like a resemblance. There's something so, we say mishpachti, it's like so familial. You and me, we're like mishpacha. And that's what's happening here too. But later on in the 1800s, a chassid, um, who calls himself the Meashiloch says this, despite their fact that maybe Lot and Avraham, Avram, maybe their outward appearances were the same. Maybe they did similar things, but actually um, they were not the same. They, they, nevertheless, God was aware of a very deep internal difference between uncle and nephew. And it, and it really showed up in some very striking ways. We, we know that these two things that appear very similar are actually very different. That's not surprising. Everybody's different. But there's a tension here that I really want us to focus on as we come up on this, on this election week and maybe weeks um, ahead of us, you know, as, as we're, you know, hoping and praying that there's a really quick, very clear, direction our, our country heads in, whatever that is, whoever wins, but it may be some time. So I want us to keep something in mind. There's this beautiful, um, there's a beautiful line that comes later in the Song of Songs. And the line is, achot lanu kitana, achot. Remember that word, achot. Um, here it means sister. Ach is brother, achot is sister. And the Midrash comes again and says, you know, who are they talking about that we have a little sister? Okay, this is like love poetry, but they're saying, you know who it is? It's Abraham. That sister that they're talking about, because in this particular moment, as we see Abraham and he's struggling with his nephew and he's, he's, he's the same as his nephew and he's calling him a brother in one moment and the next moment he's contending with him and they're not the same person, and that's life. That's mishpacha, in fact, right? That's what happens. You get along with him one minute, and the next minute you're not. You're upside down, and it's like, yich. But because, the, the, the Midrash goes on to say, why is Avram called sister? Because he, so beautiful, the Hebrew, he sewed the world together in the presence of God. What are we talking about here? It's a pun on the word achot. 
la'achot means to sew, sewing, sew a needle pulling thread, right? So we're sewing. He was like a person who tears apart and sews together, and therefore he was called achot. And um, this is like, to me, very powerful because, you know, on the one hand, we can be like the greatest mishpacha. Here we are welcoming guests as Avraham did and bringing people under the word, the, the wings of, of um, the Shekhinah, God's presence. You know, there we are just, you know, when converts came to Judaism, there was, there was Avraham welcoming people in. Um, but at the same time, there's like a very striking tension here. And this is the one that I think we're holding and I, the one I would like us to think about because I feel like I just can't hold it by myself anymore. The sensation of unity on the one hand, when that person, I, I'm telling you the silliest story right now, I lost one of my AirPods at Trader Joe's and I went back the next day and they gave it to me because some good person, that's unity. That's the kind of unity we need, right? I mean, that's, I was like, all is not lost. I have two AirPods. I was so excited about this. And it was like a real feeling of hope, as silly as it sounds. So we're holding the sensation of unity on the one hand. And then we've also got this real distinctiveness. You know, there's like this finiteness and separation and we're not each other. And, you know, that person could have taken my AirPod or that person could have told me that because I vote the way that I do, um, I'm not justifiably a human being. Or I could have said that to them. That's when we're so on different islands and we're not mishpacha anymore. And I just am feeling this need to think back. And I asked you at the very beginning of Shul tonight, I said to you, you know, two years ago was Pittsburgh. The year before that, was we, we talked to a Palestinian and, and uh, a, an Israeli settler. And I want to ask us, what's the story that we want to tell next year about this Lech Lecha? What are we going to get? You know, how do we want to get there? How is it that we are going to um, allow this moment, this election to tear us apart or to bring us together? How is it? that we're gonna stay menches, or we're gonna stop being menches. And I actually think we have to commit. It, even to one other person, I shall be a mensch. I hereby promise you that I will stay a mensch, right? We don't do that in Judaism. We don't make oaths because we know that we break them. That's why we come together at Kol Nudre and we say, God, I know that I'm gonna even break my oath next year. So we don't make those kind of empty promises but we can tell another person, I don't wanna stop being a mensch. I wanna be the most decent human being throughout because the world is not going to stand without our staying mensches. It just can't. And, and I'm not being presumptuous in saying that you're a mensch because I know you, because I know this community. This is like, you know, it's not written into our constitution at Temple Israel, um, but it is part of who we are. Peaceful, nonviolent, um, active listeners, bridge builders, and menches. This is who we are as a people and as a congregation. And I want to ask that we all make that promise to each other. That means that whether we feel like screaming or gloating, <laughs> <laughs> right? Um, that we stay a mensch, that we keep it somewhere sacred inside of us. I made a promise to be a bench um, because I completely regard that part of, of Avram that had to hold the unity and the separation at the same time and regards everything that we do as the sacred opportunity to make good on the blessings that God has given us. And that means just staying in tune with the other suffering of other people. And there will be suffering of other people coming up. We just know it because somebody has got to be the winner and somebody has got to be the loser, but it's not even about that. 
It's about who do we want to be. And I know, I know that we can be the best possible version of ourselves if we hold really fast to this menschlichkeit that we've been given, um, to, to the menschiness that we try to demonstrate all the time. So um, with that, I just want us to hold that for a moment. Oh, because we're gonna see each other soon and we're just gonna hold all of that. Um, I was gonna go into this. I, I, have, um, I have something that I can share with you another time. I'm not going to because I've taken enough time already. But there is a particular philosopher whose name was Marshall Rosenberg who created something called nonviolent communication. And he had a whole structure of how we should listen to each other, how we should talk to each other. And um, I'm happy to send you this if you would like me to, um, to send it to you, or you could take a screenshot of it right now. Um, but it's a good method when we kind of lose ourselves in the nuttiness of the election, go back to nonviolent communication, talk about your observations, feelings, needs, and then make your request and be honest and know that other people want to hear you as well. Compassion is so important for us to build right now. So um, going into um, our, the continuation of our service, I just bless us with all that insight and uh, bless you all with much, much peace and menschiness coming up. Hashkivenu, take it away, my friend, Cantor Moses. <laughs> The way we can be menches is to have love and understanding. And so we sing together. Let there be love. Let we, let there be peace.
as we're able for our tefillah. Adonai sifatai tiftach ufi agita yilatecha. Adonai open up my lips that my mouth may declare your praise. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu v'elohe avotinu v'imotinu Elohe Avraham Elohe Yitzchak v'elohe Yaakov v'elohe Yisara Elohe Rivka Elohe Rachel v'elohe Lea Ha'el ha'gadol ha'gipor v'hanora el elyon Gobel chasadim tovim v'kone ha'kol V'zokher chasde avor v'imahot U'mevi g'ula l'ivne v'nahem L'ma'an sh'mo v'ahava Melech ozer u'moshia u'magen Baruch ata Adonai Magen Avraham v'ezrat sara Atagi bo leolam Adonai mechaye hakol atarav lehoshia Mashiva ruach umorin hakashem Mechakel chayin bechesed Mechaye hakol berachamim rabim Sonech noflim verofe cholim Umatir asurim Umekayem emunato Lishenei afar Michamocha bagvurot Umidomelach Melech memit umechaye Umatzmiach yeshua Venemanat al harayot hakol Baruch ata Adonai Mechaye hakol Ata kadosh vishimcha kadosh Ukdoshim choyom yahalalu chasela Baruch ata Adonai we continue silently in our own time and then are seated when we're done. In honor of Lech Lecha, we sing this beautiful song by Debbie Friedman, Aleha HaShalom. As we don't know what tomorrow may bring, but we have the faith and the courage to know we will be protected. Your turn. 
blessing for people who are sick currently and we'll sing with the cantor in a moment, but if you'd like to add anyone's name to the chat box because you're wishing them healing, please do so now. And we add these names to your list. Daniel ben Baruch ben Carmela, Carmela bat Sylvia ben Mac, Shraga ben Alexander, Yaakov Yitzchak ben David ben Rachav, Eliyahu ben Sarah, Harav Ruben Shlomo ben Mendel Valea, Naomi bat Miriam ben Harav Yosef, Gitel bat Yehuda ben Chaya, Zisel Chana bat Yitzhak Rivka, Levia bat Rachel, Gavriela bat Nehemia Udivora. We're thinking of Yirmiyahu ben Yosef and Rachel, Sander ben Sarah, Norma Agranoff, Bob Aronson, Barbara Baumgarner. Pat Cottle, Jim Connolly, Lily Kovitz, Brie Craig, Isabel Fazone, Larry Footer, Ellie Guinness, Nate Goldberg, Keisha Hutchins. We're thinking of Ethan Kadish, Ruth Kahn, Ray Carlsberger, Del McKillinger, William Nolan, Anthony Panath, Clark Patton, Helene Pasalnik, Cassie Rush, Lisa Scher, Ben Simon, Doug Stossel, Jeff Swartz, Lee Tenenbaum, and Annette Turner and all those people that you're wishing healing for, and all those people who are across this big wide world of ours, and we are praying for them to receive healing, and receive nourishment, and come back strengthened and well. We sing with the cantor. <laughs> for those caregivers who also need healing and also need safety and protection. For all who are faithfully taking care of the community's needs, may God reward them, protect them from, and remove from them all sickness and heal them completely. May God send them blessings and success in all they do together with all of humanity and let us say, amen. And in the spirit of Menschlichkeit, as the rabbi suggests, let's all pray for our country together. Our God and God of our ancestors, we ask your blessings for our country, for its government, for its leaders and advisors, and for all who exercise, exercise just and rightful authority. Teach them insights of your Torah that they may administer all of affairs of state fairly, that peace and security, happiness and prosperity, justice and freedom may forever abide in our midst. Creator of all flesh, bless all the inhabitants of our country with your spirit. May citizens of all races and creeds forge a common bond in true harmony to banish hatred and bigotry and to safeguard the ideals and free institutions that are the pride and glory of our country. May this land under your providence be an influence for good throughout the world, uniting all people in peace and freedom and helping them to fulfill the vision of your prophet. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they experience war anymore. And let us say, Amen. Amen. And for Israel, rock and champion of Israel, please bless the state of Israel, first fruit of the flourishing of our redemption. Guard it in the abundance of your love, spread over it the shelter of your peace. Send forth your light and truth to those who lead and judge it and to those who hold elective office, establish in them through your presence wise counsel that they might walk in the way 
of justice, freedom, and integrity. Avinu, Avinu, Sheba Shamayim, Tzur Yisrael Vegalo. Avinu, Avinu, Sheba Shamayim, Tzur Yisrael Vegalo. We rise. Amen. Amen, amen is right. We rise for our Aleinu prayer. Aleinu l'shabeach l'adon ha'kol l'atit g'dula l'yotzeh b'reishit Sh'lo asanu k'goye ha'ratzot v'lo asamanu k'mishpachot ha'dama Sh'lo sam chelkenu k'ahem v'gor aleinu k'chol ha'monam V'anachnu k'orim u'mishtachavim u'modim Lifne melech malchei hamlachim hakadosh baruch hu v'neemar v'hayadonai lemelech al kol ha'aretz b'yom ha'hu b'yom ha'hu hiyei adonai echad u'shemo 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 Please be seated as we turn to Kaddish and remember those people that are dear to us. In particular, we're remembering during the period of Shiva, the mother of Greg Hooker, Jane Hooker. And in the period of Shloshim, the 30 days after someone has died, we are remembering Sue Cohn and Alice Bain. If you're joining us during the 11 month period after having lost somebody you love, will you please stand and quietly say the name of the person for whom you're wishing, uh, you're, you're continuing to remember them for Kaddish. You can even write their name in the chat box if you would like. And this is the yard site, the anniversary of the following loved ones deaths. Theodore D. Barnaby, Philip Beckman, Leon Wallace Dillon, Jean Epstein, Rose Fagan, Helen Feibel, Jerry, Gerald Jerry Gilbert, excuse me, Adolf Gildenberg, Rachel Janowitz, Rosa Jossel, Jossel Philip Kershaw, Rose Eichberg Lazarus, Janet Lehman, Louis Lovett, Cyril Martin, Dora Minner. We remember Harold Lee Monette. Jeffrey Nacht, Scott Baron Oster, Robert Payne, Jack Pressman, Marjorie Rosen, Rose Schnitz, Beverly Silberman, Ruth Stone, Sanford Tuckerman, Mary Weinstein, William Zelko, and Sonia Katz Zelmanovich. If there are any other additional names that you would like to add, to our cottage list, please just write their name in the chat box, stand right now. And we ask everyone to stand as we remember people across the lengths of breaths of our world who have died this time in times past. We stand and we say Kaddish together. Yitzkadal v'yitzkadash shemei rabba. Be'ol ma'adiv rachirutei v'yam lich malchutei. Bechayechon of Yomechon of Chaye de Hobet Israel, Bagalau, Bisman, Kariv, Vimru, Amen. Yehesh me Rabba, Mevorach, Leol Amolo, Meol Maya. Yit Barach, Vishtabach, Vit Paar, Vit Roman, Vit Nase. Vit Adar, Vit Ale, Vit Halal, Shme de Kudsha, Brihu. Le Ela Minko, Birchata, Vishirata. Tush Bechata, Venechamata. Da Amiran, be all ma, Vimru, Amen. Yehe Shlama Rabba Min Shemaya Vachaim Aleinu Vealko Yisrael Vimru Amen. Ose Shalom Yimramav. Huya Ase Shalom Amenu Vealko Yisrael Vealko Yoshve Tevel Vimru Amen. May the source of peace bring peace to all who mourn, to everyone who grieves, and may you remember them well with a blessing, Zihronam Vivracha, and we say Amen. Please be seated, friends, and 
we come to a few quick announcements, Jewish meditation, a special election <laughs> meditation. That might seem like an oxymoron at this moment. I don't know, but there are ways that we can meditate, center ourselves and just breathe into the moment. I hope that you'll join me tomorrow morning for that at 10 o'clock on your favorite Zoom channel. The next morning at 9 a.m., our new time, we'll be um, continuing our study of generosity and its opposite component, stinginess, um, in our Musar study. I hope you'll join us for that too. No experience with either of these is necessary. We hope you'll join us. Cantor, would you like to announce this? Sure. So um, as the rabbi and I were thinking how we can hold each other in this liminal space, um, post Chagim, after the holidays, pre-election, we came up with the idea when there are just no more words that their song, right? And this beautiful idea of the nigun with the, a wordless melody that um, we can know what our feelings sound like through just our chanting together. So please join us. No experience necessary. You don't have to, to know anything because there are no words to the songs. We are just going to be together and hold sacred space Monday um, evening or before dinner time. Come join us at five o'clock and um, we're, we're going to be joining uh, the other congregation, um, Beth Chaim of Philadelphia. Is that right, Phil Philly? Alvern, Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. Yeah, outside of Philly. Um, we're joining with another congregation. Um, please bring your voices. Our voices are powerful together. Um, so we'd love to see you there. And we're excited that Izzy Nave and Nathan Render will be joining us to help sing. Um, our offices will be closed. You know what you got to do. Vote, vote, please. And um, then the day after, then go take a nap after that and then come back Wednesday. At six o'clock, we'll be joining again with our friends at um, Beth Chaim Congregation and also um, St. Paul's Baptist Church of Pennsylvania. Um, all of us with some, with some other local leaders um, will be coming together, all these congregations, prayer for ourselves and our country, a post-election interfaith gathering. There is no agenda to any of these things. It's really just opportunities to be together. together. And then, Rounding out the week before Shabbat, this amazing film, which I would love you to come to as well. It's called They Ain't Ready For Me. And it features um, Tamar Manasse. She is a power, she is a tour de force. Um, she is a black rabbinical student um, who is just an incredible person. Her story, you should really hear her tell it. But essentially, she started a group called MASK, which is Mothers Against Senseless Killings in Chicago in a really violent neighborhood. And she decided to go sit with some of her mom friends on a corner. And there is now a school there. She has just taken the neighborhood by force in the most peaceful, amazing way. And she's Jewish and she's built a sukkah there and she's had a seder there. You got to hear her story. And I'm so excited that I, as part of the Jewish Film Festival of Columbus this year, I get to interview her and Brad Rothschild, who's the director. So I hope you'll come on Thursday night. You can watch the film starting on election day and you can, or election night, I think 7 p.m. Good distraction. And you can watch it all the way through until we start at seven o'clock for our Q&A. So hope you'll join us for all these great things and join us with a little hala and wine right now as we join the canter. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam borei peri hagafen. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam asher kitshanu b'mitzvotah v'ratzav hanu v'shabad kocho b'avah v'ratzon hinchilanu zikaron l'maase v'reshit ki hu yom t'chila l'mikrae kodesh Everyone, kivanu varcharta veotanu kitashta mikol amim veshabat kachcha beahava uvratzon inchatanu. Baruch ata Adonai Mekadish HaShabbat.
the Chaim. Amen. You can see there's there's half uh, everything seeds, half not, tailored to the taste of my family. <laughs> Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam Hamotzi lachem min haaretz Amen This wonderful mishpacha that we have, our wonderful family. Treat everybody like family and we can't go wrong. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom.